Junior Green Wings, Zareth and LeBlanc, the first two bands. As I There's that Rek'Sai band, okay. In all of the sets so far, looks like KT may be going back to their first game bands of Zareth, Rek'Sai, and Cassidy. Meanwhile, Lissandra will be banned yeah, on I, the red side. So I Lissandra like banned for the first time in this series. In game one on red side, Jin Air banned LeBlanc, Nar, and Lulu. I like the Lissandra band. I, I do think it's a little bit, it, it did seem like it was a bit too dangerous to let KT have that first pick. And there is Callista. Oh, okay. So Cassidy may be falling through picks and bands this time as Nar will be the final band. Lulu and Cassidy both up. Lulu will be the choice. So will Cassidy be taken by Jin Air Green Wings? They've got a lot of options here. John is still available. Jarvin's still available. Morgana's still available. You know, I'm not too afraid of Nod Maze Cassidy if I'm Jin Air just after we saw the performance that he turned in against Incredible Miracle where he really had no effect on the champion. I like this, uh, if they do pick this Ezreal first too, I like it. It could yep. go mid, it could go AD carry. It really tells KT nothing, and it's safe against, you know, really any mid laner they pick or anything they pick. Not to mention that it really discourages the pickup of the cast in and the oh, mid very lane true, yeah. for KT because they're not going to want that matchup. So I think, I think you're absolutely right. The Ezreal may be... A strong early draft decision here from the Green Wings. So Jana Ezreal not really showing too much right there. I actually think that's quite clever. It's very smart because Pilot, you know, it's not just like, oh yeah, I suppose the AD carry can play it. Pilot actually has recently played Ezreal too. Right. So there is that very real threat on Jin Air that doesn't exist quite as much on uh, some of the other teams. Yeah, uh, and this will also open up the possibility of last picking the Cassidy in as well for the for Jin Air. Now the yes. Ari is available. That is going to be locked in. So KT allowing that to fall in. Now they did pick up the Ari. Their first round of the draft last time was Corky and Ari, so mixing it up. Yeah. Jarvan Ari goes over. So it looks like we will see a top lane Lulu more than likely. Yeah. Could be flexed into the support role, but. Yeah, generally speaking though, it's, uh, she's not the strongest support when compared to her abilities in the mid and top lane these days. True. Jin Air may take Rumble, but that would be a pretty, that's a losing matchup into Lulu, of course, that range. And the shields from Lulu does make it quite difficult to play Rumble in CS. A lot of auto attack damage raining in. Oh, wow. That would be really bold to take the Corky and show the mid lane Ezreal right away. I suppose. Now right. I would guess we'd be seeing a Sivir out of Arrow. But the mid lane Ezreal, now that they've seen the mid laner, uh, they, yeah, I think it's smart just to save this. We've seen, uh, this was before Ari changes of course, but we saw Coco absolutely destroy Faker with Ezreal into Ari previously. If you do run the cleanse onto Ezreal, uh, you can output so much more damage onto the Ari thanks to the auto attacks. You can arcane shift the Orb of Deception as well. Yep. So it does make it a really difficult matchup for Ari to duel an Ezreal straight up. Wow, and they may be considering playing a protected Kog'Maw comp here. Sure, that's going to be the wisest of plans. Yeah. Especially since they should be confident that Corky is going to be last picked right here. You know, only GE Tigers have been able to pull that off, and they're going to switch it over to Corky. I think that's a little bit safer. I think that is a much better plan. Yeah. Now, will this put Pilot on the Sivir, possibly? Especially because one thing that has been going very well for Jenner, remember the game that they played against CJ where they had. Rumble and Zareth, and they were able just to blow Coco up at the back line. Trace's equalizers were so good. Yeah. Similar story here. True Shot Barrage and Equalizer could absolutely demolish a Kog'Ma immediately. Uh, even if they have the wild growth coming in, it can be quite risky. So Corky definitely the safer pick. Yeah, I like Corky here. You've got some good poke. It's looking similar to the composition that Jin Air ran in game one. Yeah. Uh, of course. They, they went for that Thresh instead of the Nami. I think the Thresh is better. Or, I mean, the Nami is better. I did have some complaints about that in game one. So, the Nami should be able to kite this out. So, KT Arrow's mixing up. They're going to be going for the kite comp right now. And will we see 
In fact, this Cassidy coming in versus the Ari. Still going to be okay, of course. You do have that mobility. Ooh. Huh. Yeah. Could go for the Zipper. Could go for the Cassidy. Where's the Ezreal going to go? That's the question. So it will be Cassidy. Okay. All right. Well, like we said, Pilot has played Ezreal. I believe it was three games ago. Four games ago or so? Yeah, three games ago. Yep. Well, interesting. I like the cast in here, too. There is, of course, that matchup versus Ari where you will be able to block a lot of damage due to the magic shield. So definitely not the worst thing in the world for generic green wings. And we'll see if GBM can pull off this champion as well. Sure enough. Well, there's our roster for our final game of the night, Jenner. A win here, again, could put them up to 5-2 and two on the season overall, and because of match to core, make them undisputed 5-2. and two. Whereas KT Rolster, if they were able to take it, they would tie Najin in, in match score, but in game score, they would still be pretty far behind. Yeah, they would be. Uh, GBM has played Cassidy in four games. He's 2-2 two and two on the champion, but we haven't seen it from him recently. Okay. So this will be pretty telling as to his, the depth of his champion pool, which seems to grow pretty rapidly right now, but he with Trace are going to be a big threat to the back line of KT Rolster. We'll see how well they can do protecting them. I do think that their Corky will be better, and KT basically taking uh, the comp that Janair had in game one and trying to use it against them. That's right, well here we go guys, game number three. Who's gonna take it? Let's find out. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, KT Rolster versus Jin Air Green Wings. Fans are ready to go. I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go, Monty? I am indeed. And oh, I really good. like KT's comp. Again, they get through yeah. with a good draft. Uh, they basically, I like the Nami a lot better than the Thresh that we saw from Jin Air. I think that if Jin Air had had the Nami in game one, they may have been able to win some of those team fights with better tidal waves. And they have the Jarvan instead of the Lee Sin, which will have much more of an effect into the late game with the crowd control. So yeah. all in our, all KT, they have the top Lulu instead of the Morgana, still going to be used primarily for peel and for kiting. Uh, but I, I have to say, overall, I think KT has a better version of the quirky Ari kiting composition that Jin Air fielded. Meanwhile, Jin Air, a lot of mobility, good disengage, and Good engage as well, coming in from Cassidy and Rumble. Yeah. So we'll see if they can catch some of the more slippery members of the KT Arrows. Lulu always has a great time. <laughs> She's and insane, so that helps. Yeah. In the jungle. Well, the insane in the happy way, not insane. Yeah. <laughs> Like or self-loathing, <laughs> or, <laughs> or sinister. Sinister way. way. A little bit sinister. I don't find Lulu particularly sinister. I don't know, man. She turns people into edible <laughs> items. <laughs> but she doesn't eat them, so. True. But still. I don't know if you've read her lore. It's a little bit sinister. That's what I'm told, but uh, you know I don't read League of Legends lore. I don't. Did you know... That her, uh, no, I didn't know. Whatever you're about to tell me, I didn't is, know. Her hat is the crown of Jarkman II. Got <laughs> <laughs> a very funny crown. <laughs> Not your average crown. He too was insane. That's right. <laughs> that's true. But that's mostly uh, due to uh, inbreeding in the royal family, of course. <laughs> yes. A classic. <laughs> a nobility classic. Ah, yes. Pan cultural. The, the good old days. <laughs> Well, GBM hitting that level two a little bit after Nagne. They're gonna be okay. So don't worry. Oh, Arrow dodging that whirlwind. Ooh. Level two advantage. Yeah, just cue it. Yeah, Cheyenne. Well, good zoning now. I mean, with John Ezreal, you will be able to put a lot of pressure on. And there's a Q okay. landing right on the Nagne. Chaser doing some damage. Chaser with a level two ganks today. First one didn't really work out for him. Again, just taking that one buff and trying to make a play. Trying to redeem himself. Doesn't 
Doesn't actually do much. Oh, wow. Here's the reverse level three gank score. Not going to get in range of the flag and drag. Meanwhile, Chaser will not come to his teammate's aid. Instead, just yeah. quietly taking the scuttle crab. Well, GBM walking away from that one casually in, in a way that you would think Kassin would just see this gank coming and be like, oh my, and just back <laughs> away slightly. It wasn't very stressful. Sounds like George Decay. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Kassin was voiced by George Decay. That would be amazing. We can work on it. <laughs> you know, I'll, we have to be careful though. Because, you know, again, with your, like, vomit skin <laughs> ideas, we don't want to have all the voice actors lose their jobs <laughs> to uh, Korean Lissandra. <laughs> or former Star Trek actors. That's right. He'd be way more expensive, though, I would think. Yeah, probably. He's, he's a pretty popular guy. For <laughs> people, people are aware of him. <laughs> a pretty standard early game, pretty passive across the board. A couple little gank attempts, a lot of farming, a little bit of poking. That's about it. Yeah, they've had some pretty famous voice actors. Yeah. In League of Legends. You know the Rumble? None of them the have Rumble. been on StarCraft. Star, Star Trek. Trek. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> Gamian slip there. I, I don't know what you say. Video Gamian slip. Do you know the voice of the guy who did Rumble? Oh, as we see a gank right oh, here. Oh, Trace. Oh, there's a chilling smite. He's going to have to find a different way to get away. He's Chaser's in a lot here. of trouble. Going back in, there's the safeguard. Can Trace actually make it out the shield? Oh, but he gets standarded. And first blood goes to score. Chaser retreating back to his own turret. Yeah, Trace caught out a little bit. Yeah. In the river. So what happened? What's the deal with his voice actor? Oh, it's the same voice actor who did Zim from Invader Zim. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that was a good, sh that was a cult classic of the show if ever I saw one. It was quite good. I could see it. Did he do the voice for Super Galaxy Rumble though? I don't know, but I will think less of him if he did. That skin you, is the most annoying skin in the game, hands down. You will at the same time love and hate him, just like at the same time Gollum loves and hates the Ring of Power. <laughs> Yes, exactly in that same manner. Exactly the same. You watch it, baby Zim, and you're like, my a, precious. <laughs> that is a great analogy. Thank you. There, Doa. Your simile skills are off the charts yeah. today. Hooray. Well, score waiting back by the turret. Going to try maybe a little bit of a lane gank. And with Trace minus his flash right now, he is going to be a very tempting target. You can see him warding that try, or he doesn't have the try warded, rather. Yeah, Trace is just going to need to be really far back for a while. He needs to play back. I mean, it's not yeah. the biggest deal in the world if Rumble dies early. He had to, he's not losing XP because he did have the teleport up in order to get back into lane. And that's really yep. the most important aspect of Rumble is having that experience. Trace is under the turret, though. He's not level 6 quite yet. Will hit 6 off this wave. But let's be careful about a dive while growth is available, of course. True. Wow. He's actually not going to hit 6 off this wave. Huh. That was a huge wave, too. A bit surprising. It's like he's like two, wow. two minions away. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to. This would be very silly to bad luck. walk up. Score really committing to this gank, though. They want to punish this rumble early. I mean, uh. I don't know if this is the best plan. Remember that CJ tried to punish Trace early on, and Trace died several times, and yet. That game still ended at Jinner's favor in a quick 35-minute set, and well, Trace managed to make himself extremely useful despite being pretty far behind. Well, yeah, that's the beauty of, of Rumble, right, is that you aren't as item-dependent as a lot of other champions. You still have good amounts of damage on your abilities no matter what, and your <laughs> ult is always going to be helpful. And there we go, just equalizer used just as Score gets away, too, which is kind of funny. Wow, Score used a lot of time yeah, he did. in that top lane, and Trace Nonplussed. Playing very cautiously. I hate robots. Go ahead and do the crux right here. In the meantime, Chaser and Score haunting the river and the mid lane, but nothing really going to come of it. Chaser just looking for an opportunity. Standing in the river will W his way back into his own jungle. GBM holding up very well against this Ari so far, no surprise. Starting with the Flask, now moving into the Catalyst, so tons and tons of sustain. Yeah. Pilot has not gone back yet, which leads me to believe he's going to be going for Triforce and skipping that tier right away. I mean, if you go tier and you're casting into starting a of ages, oh, Arrow takes some damage, that would be a pretty low damage comp for a while, wouldn't it? Does that seem too risky to you? What do you think? 
Uh, yeah, you you would run into a pretty big power trough right there with Rod and Tear. Yeah. So I, I agree with you. I think that that's going to be the better itemization option is to go for that Trinity Force immediately. Yep. But you also have the Rumble too, which will have some power. So yeah. As long as they play it safely, it, it could be okay. But I think the more well, if you go back and get the tier now, that's a lot of time lost, so you could have been stacking it, too. Yeah, I, I think that definitely the better choice to go for the Trinity Force, but not an unforgivable sin to go for the tier, just because you I have will never forgive him if he goes for the tier. <laughs> just because you have the Rumble, but the Rumble is behind as well. It has died. Pilot so. will be dead to me. <laughs> I see how it is, Doa. You're so fickle. I am. Easily disappointed. I thought I, I was the easily disappointed one. And, well, you know, it's different for me in AD carries. <laughs> I'm very particular about the qualities that they must have. <laughs> yeah. You've been burned too many times so by I've been, your I've been hurt partners. too many times, Monty. <laughs> I just want an ADC that does damage and goes all in whenever I want him to get the bloodthirsty kills. But I think Pilot's going to go Triforce first. We will see. A long time yeah. here, but not so much action happening in the bottom lane. Just has been pretty farm-centric so far. Although, you see much. Shea out of pots, while Hachani has that little bit of sustain, so hasn't been yeah. quite run out of those consumables quite yet. Well, you do have that that edge with Nami as well, too, where you can just focus on getting mana pots and then just be healed by your W. Well, Nog ranks into that, you'll be fine. Nogni's done a lot of damage to this tower so far. GBM has been bottled up under his turret. And also, notice Score has had good wards. First, he had a ward right by the Raptors. We're seeing Whoop. Chaser Whoops. through that one. And then he changed it up. And so that'll be a fast tower. So Score, thanks to the deep wards he's been getting, allows Nogne to push forward hmm. and take out that mid turret. Score playing this matchup really nicely so far. And GBM. Push back, now to his tier two. Gonna try and take the dragon right here. Looks like Jin Air will have to give this one up in favor of a little bit more scaling. I don't think they can really reasonably go after this trace. Just Q it. Doesn't have equalizer. Yeah, everybody there. Oh, true shot for Aji. Thought they would have pulled it out a little bit, but I guess not. Uh... Oh, all right. They're gonna go after Chaser as well, too. There's a kill. Tidal wave comes through. Nagne in a lot of trouble. GBM, GBM goes, goes down, down though. Oh, a double kill for Nogne. Oh, man. And that's a mistake wow. that you make with the new Ari. That extra yep. bit of movement speed gets overestimated a lot of the time. You can't all in her like you used to be able to. Very true. Because she can kite so efficiently. Chaser gets caught out. You got to leave that one behind. There was a ward right there. Able to see him. GBM gets knocked up just wow. on the edge. Hachani with the flash as well. GBM has that. But look at this. You just can't close that gap. Yep. No more cooldowns for GBM and barely living. Not well, that, uh, that tidal wave is clutch from Hachani. If also he had the not hit flow. GBM, that would have been a kill for Cassidy. Yeah, also the ebb and flow right there. Really, true, the, true. the fact that he flashed for it really did make a big difference. So that'll yep. be two kills and a dragon. And all of a sudden, KT sporting a 2,000 gold lead and a dragon advantage early on into this game. Coming out strong, man, Nagne has done. He has played better in this series by far yeah, it's like than where, he has in the rest of the season. Where is the old KT and what have you done with him? Yep. All right, so Trace just clearing out the wave there. But yeah, I think you have to know when to give that one up. Chaser should have been heading topside to see if he could do something on the opposite side of the map instead of wandering around near Dragon. Trace just couldn't help thanks to his ult being down. Wow, and Pilot did actually pick up that tier. So he is dead to me now. Oh well, GBM, they're gonna find score here going in with the safeguard, the Q as well. Nogne trying to get a kill and he will on the gank by Mob. Chaser in trouble as well, but Trace coming down from the top lane is enough to scare Nogne away. At least he doesn't want to go into that jungle. He had a ward by Red, so. He knew where Rumble was. All right, Rod of Age is completed, but still more and more damage piled onto this tier two. Achani there now, 
Joining Nagne for a little bit of pressure. 80 carries just playing back. Yeah, I don't know about this, Doha. I mean, obviously, if they can survive long enough, the power spike will be massive, but they are already 3,000 gold in the hole. They just cannot give up as many kills as they've been giving up. That's that's the big problem right now, is that, yeah, you might lose a turret or two, but again, if, if it's for the long game, you can survive that. But getting caught feeding this Ari is not something you could do. And this new Ari, man, with 5.2, this is going to be one of the big priority picks going forward until something changes. Well, it will change pretty quickly, I think. I would think so, yeah. Obviously, this champion is a pretty potent selection right now. There really are no obvious downsides to her. Yeah. And Trace. KT playing for tower damage just to snowball their lead. Chaser coming up, but he's at 50%. They are going to see their red buff being taken, but I don't think they can do much about it. Well, actually they can. They have four people on top side. Two people are recalling, though. So it looks like they'll just give that red buff up. They were at about 50% HP. Yeah. Trace doesn't have a teleport to use, but someday is not actually going to push this wave forward. So it looks like that top lane tower will stand for a little bit longer. KT doing just a really, really good job of seizing every little bit of control they can at this point in the game. Yeah, this has been smoother early game play out of KT. Yeah. Than we've seen in a little while. Nagne gets handed over the blue buff after the red steal right there, and GBM trying to farm for. They will see him, of course, but he's not going to be able to go too much further than that. Nagne with the level advantage for the moment. Trace has got to be a bit careful. His turret's extremely low. Goes up to ward. There we go. Gets caught in the Cataclysm. Trace has to burn that flash. Gets knocked up, though, by the QE combo. And I don't know. Trace, no ult. I don't think he's going to get away from this one. Someday flashes. Will pick up that kill. And they're going to get the turret pretty quickly as well. Meanwhile, down at the bottom of the map, team's trying to set up for Dragon. They've got some time, but things really going off the rails fast for Jyn Air right now. Yeah, Trace not really respecting the fact that Jarvan could be there. Deep wards in across. Scores wards have been absolutely fantastic this game. They yeah. have enabled all of the pressure across the map. Score is definitely playing quite well. And they do get the Scuttle Crab, so. And next time I run a D&D &D campaign, I'm going to make an evil wizard named Scores Wards. <laughs> Scores Wards. <laughs> Sounds like an evil wizard if ever I've <laughs> heard one. I argue with you there. So Pink Ward stays alive thanks to Hachani's aggressive posturing in the river. And look at that, two core items already done for Nagne. He's quickly running away with this game. I'm not sure how GBM is going to be able to come back in. Trace, too, yeah. in a bit of a bind. Fallen down by 40 CS, 25 in the mid lane, and then 40 up in top side. They're going to try and contest this dragon all the same. They have the equalizer, but that's about their only advantage right now. You know, the thing is, is KT is, as a team, is so close to being not even able to get into the playoffs, you know, with a few more losses here and there. But if they lose a few more times, get out completely, but still play at this level, they can be like major spoilers to yeah, other teams for the second half of the can. season. Man, it's like scary to think about. The revenge of the KT from beyond the grave. <laughs> pulling other teams down with them to the netherworld. Well, lack of wave clear here. Not going to make defending the tier two easy. Pilot has to yep. shoot the true shot barrage. I'm not sure it's going to be enough though. Uh, it looks like it's not, even with the Janna shield. Wow. KT doing a great job of snowballing this one. Constant yeah. pressure on these towers, looking a lot like game one. Very clean rotations and 4,000 gold ahead. So Jyn Air is really going to have to do everything they can to play from behind. And we've seen them do it very well before. We saw it already today. Wasn't quite enough then. And it's going to be 6,000 soon after this next turret. I mean, well, yeah, this is a devastating advantage for KT Rollstar. Looks like they've got a much bigger mountain to climb this game. Maybe they can make some of it up with their first turret of the game. But four turrets to zero. That's a dragon as well. For KT and Jyn Air, I don't know how they're going to come back in this one. Stranger things have happened. We'll well, uh, this would have to be truly bizarre. And Jyn Air really rising to the occasion against some of the top teams in this league. But when they have to face IM, when they have to face KT, they 
a bit cocky and stumble. Some players, Che and Chase, are making uncharacteristic mistakes in those matches. Yeah. And I think Jin Air, this is more of an attitude issue than anything else. It really does seem like that. You, you hate to call it something like that, too, because these guys are so talented. But well, it, I mean, what, it, what else is it going to be, really? It, We've seen them beat much better teams than KT. In game one, Chaser was just straight up playing very disrespectfully, yeah. thinking that they weren't going to be in places or making very wild assumptions. I think giving uh, KT the RE2 was uh, a bit cocky as well this game, and they're certainly paying for it. I think it would have been better if they had played that Ezreal in the mid lane. I agree. Instead of the Cassidy. Another equalizer has to be used on a minion wave. I think Sivir would have been a perfectly fine uh, choice for yep. Pilot as well, too. Absolutely. Puts him into a winning lane matchup against the Corky as well. Yeah. Well, as is, the game isn't over yet, but it's not going to be easy for Jin Air to have a chance to win this one. More pressure up on this top lane in KT. Going to take their fifth turret of the game potentially here. Well, we'll just, see. There's just no wave clear. I mean, you use the equalizer. Ezreal can't be everywhere at once. And that's the other thing too. Is Trace is never going to have an equalizer for an actual team fight at this point. KT, very good at pushing their edge right here, mm -hmm. and also pressing multiple lanes simultaneously. So this. Ezreal simply can't be everywhere at once. I'm just not a big fan of Pilot's build as well this game too, you know. And I agree. I, I feel like Triforce into anything would have been better than this. I also, the Iceborne Gauntlet, I mean, it's just, there's not enough attack damage coming in KT. All of their poke is true damage or magic damage. Yeah. So what what's the point of getting the Iceborne Gauntlet, I mean, sure, maybe you can slow the minion waves to give your tower one or two extra attacks as they walk into the turret. I suppose that, <laughs> that's, I'm trying to grasp it at straws here. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is is at the end of the day, these guys are pro gamers. You want to assume, well, you know they've, they're they doing everything they're doing for a reason. There's not a lot of, like, random item selections at this level in League of Legends. But some of the decisions, some of the reasons seem, you really wonder what, you know, they're kind of planning with this. I suppose one advantage Jin Air has to allow oh, wow, just more great rotations for KT showing up. Now they're going to try and catch Arrow when they see so many people on the bottom side, but they don't have a good way well, to can follow turn and, up. He can turn a tidal wave any time he wants to. There's another equalizer right on the wave right there, just buying themselves some time. It's a good thing that it's such a short cooldown ultimate. They need it for wave clear. All right, they might be able to get the red buff here. Looks like they will. Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Well, GBM has that needlessly large rod on top of the Rod of Ages now. And with his multiple rods, he should start to be doing, he should be starting to do a little bit of damage now. Yeah, just a matter of waiting for that thing to scale. Yeah. Now, with all of the magic damage coming in from KT, of course, we saw the problem of all the veils on the side of KT in the late game against Jynair when they ran a similar composition. If Jynair can get some veils and a, and a lock in here and take it to the ultra late game, I think they will have an advantage, but yeah. they are a real long way away from that happening. And with two dragons already on KT, they have to do something here a little bit sooner, make some sort of play to get themselves back into this one. Looks like Pilot will be going for the last whisper as his next item. So the same build that we saw out of GBM in his mid lane Ezreal, in the previous game. With Veils and Locket and a Crucible, they can maybe come back and win, or they can have a very lovely tea party. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. Items work both ways. GBM, though, he's just bringing the flask. <laughs> the, 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 the surreptitious liquor. That's right. In this game, he might need it. <laughs> surreptitious liquor was... They even want to buy bands in high school, though. Oh, wow. You just, <laughs> you just did a band joke. I'm so proud of you. That was great. Strip just a slicker. That is a great, that is a great band name. I applaud you. Definitely, definitely Good job. an indie band. Good job. Sounds like something you'd record your albums on, like, a four-track cassette tape thing, you know? KT is going to take this blue buff. Oh, wow. Not really anything that Janair can do right yeah. now. Be given over. Oh, shut up, Nami. Nami does get hit by a little bit of damage from the uh -huh. first shot barrage. That's what she gets. I'm singing like that for annoying me. Oh, 
Jin Air trying to push up this bottom lane while they can. They know that having pressure on the bot lane means Chaser pressure got it. on the Baron. He did get it. Wow. But he had to use his smite right there. Maybe not the best idea with Dragon up at 20 seconds. So he has two he's, charges. He has I was going to say, yeah, we've got the two charges things now. So that's just a 15 second cooldown between the uh, smites yes. if you've got the extra charge. Indeed it is. Looked yep. like at first he didn't have that second charge, but had it nice and stored up. Someday, still up on the top side. There we go. Scuttler, speed buff. So. Army. Army right. actually recalling right there, but no contest. Yeah. See things from KT Rolster. Several members right there. I wanted to see how many dragon buffs by who was clicked on, but the dragon was clicked on, and he doesn't have dragon buffs. He uh, just is the dragon. He's number three for KT. Yep. We get number four right before the 30 minute mark here, and that's going to put unbelievable pressure onto Jin Air. And we also see Chaser not itemizing for a locket. Be troublesome. Trace is going to try and get. The Abyssal Scepter this game, probably a wise decision. GBM opting for the Zonia's Hourglass. Of course, that armor not going to be overly helpful, but at least he'll have the active to work with. It's like Pilot getting even more kiting items. I'm not sure really that's going to be too helpful considering that KT is the one that wants to kite. They're not really going to be engaging very much. Yeah, I think he's just really worried about that Ari, you know? the damage that Nagne can do getting into the back lines is pretty substantial, but Ezreal has good disengages anyway, so. I yeah. I think that you really go for the Last Whisper here because they have no armor and you have, your poke will hit like a truck. I mean, that Muramon is almost complete. Yeah. So just get the extra armor penetration. I think that's a better decision. You do, do you think maybe Janair is anticipating some sort of Three ones, one ones, three one one split push, and so Ezreal maybe going for a little bit more of a dueling build. Uh, maybe, but I still don't think you're likely to. Well, maybe he could win a duel against Corky because he has the armor. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Pressure across all lanes already. Oh, arrow forced the Valkyrie away. Oh, miss on to Hachani right there. There may have actually been some pretty decent follow-up had the Tornado landed. Someday still pushing. Trace has teleport. Both top laners do. They can get back up to top lane if they need to. Now the gold lead really hasn't grown very much for KT. Only just getting that third dragon. They haven't been able to destroy any further towers, get kills, Janair playing conservatively, but they have to make a play if they want to come back into this game. Trace is going to be forced to maybe use his ult right here. This is kind of the part where, uh, yep, there it is. This is kind of the part where Janair really has been excelling, though, too, is when they're down like this, when they're on the ropes. That seems to be when they kind of come alive the most, too. Well, I, they did a great job of nearly coming back in the first game of this series. Now, obviously, this is even more of a difficult mountain to climb. They're still contesting yeah. buffs, though. They're not letting anything go for free. And nope, oh. that'll be a smite from score to take that one away. They're looking for a pick here to take a tower. Trace playing very far back, but there's a lot of damage coming in, and they're not prepared to defend this tier two at all. Another tower, five to one now, KT. Wow with the advantage. And KT has just owned the map the entire game long, and Janair is still trying to farm into relevancy at this point. Muramon a Dundo for Pilot, so he's going to be doing a bit more damage. And they're going to need every ounce of damage they can get to keep KT from taking a Baron here. Yeah, nice deep wards in onto Janair's topside jungle, so they've got a lot to do to clear out this advantage. Shut up, Nami. Magne will be going back, finishing up that death cap. Yeah. That's, and getting another blasting wand on top of it. He is just terrifying right now. Full core item up on GBM. Yeah. 60 CS, three kills. Total domination, big, big CS lead for KT. That's where a lot of this gold difference is coming from. There's really nothing that Janair can do. KT pushing the wave clear advantage that they had extremely hard. And while I like Janair's pickup of Ezreal early in that draft, I think that the decision when you have that matchup that we know goes so well for the cleanse Ezreal, 
Also, GBM taking Ignite this game, which is a bit curious. Maybe should have taken Cleanse on the Cassidy. Yeah, I mean, they maybe were really banking on that level two gank that Chaser tried. Banking a little bit too much on it. Pink Ward here, but Ward in the back of the blue pit is going to alert KT to the attempt on this blue buff. KT coming in, there's a Cataclysm, they lock up Jay, there's a Flash, Equalizer used. Nagne coming in from the side, oh, they charm Pilot, got taken out, GBM had to flee as well, and KT coming in, they catch Trace as well, a double kill now for Nagne. That is the opposite of what Jin Air needed to have happen there. And he got the blue buff at the end yep. of all of that anyway. Wow, this is just great teamwork from KT, just from the get-go right here, score providing so much vision for his team. And for the first time this season, they have a reliable carry. Nagne has been performing tonight. Yeah. And it's really improved this team. They look like a different team. Like, if the nameplates weren't on there, I would not in a million years say this was KT Rolster, if you ask me who it was. Yeah, especially after their last match against IM, where yeah. they, I mean, might as well not have shown up. Yeah for all the effort that looked like went into that series. They came out much stronger, much more decisive this evening. And have been turning in their match of the season so far. Sure enough. And let's watch this one again. Pilot just straight up getting caught here. Well, I mean, he tries to get behind people. Actually, unfortunately, I, I think that that charm was not even intended for him. It was going after GBM, but GBM slid out of the way at the last second and yeah, it could be. the follow-up. I mean, Jin Air is still trying to make a game of this, but with a 10K deficit in 30 minutes, and now this dragon is certainly going to be taken, barring some miracle from Jin Air. Well, it looks like Jin Air is going to try to push down the mid lane and just get some turrets here. That's actually going to pull KT back. They're going to leave Corky to finish off dragon. And they should be able to defend mid, too. Oh, yeah. well, the carry is actually carrying tonight. Arrow having such a good score line and impact in the first game of this series, and Nagne in the last two games doing some good work. Yeah. So KT may finally have some players capable of investing kills and turning them into a winning snowball because it does seem very distant that Janera will be able to come back. Yep, in looking, this game. looking unlikely there. About 10,000 gold down at 30 minutes. Opponent has four dragons, six to one in turrets. It, you don't really get too much more behind than Jin Air is right now. Right, should be a pretty easy close from KT. Yeah. So many more items for them. Yeah, looks like they're gonna try to take a casual Baron here. A casual Baron. <laughs> that was the name what? of my uh, 1950s spy novel that I wrote. <laughs> Quite the Renaissance man. <laughs> Sounds like you're more of the 20th century man, but that's okay. Maybe if I did giant oil paintings. There you go. I've done those though. <laughs> Were they pre-Raphaelite enough? Uh, yeah, definitely. Well, really, I mean, it was the rise of mannerism that led to the <laughs> end of the true High Renaissance. But I wouldn't really consider Raphael too much of a downturn there. <laughs> but I can see your point. Further pressure from KT. Yep. Very methodical play. I, really, game one and game three have shown some very strong rotational play from KT that has been non-existent for the rest of this season. So, looking substantially better than the way they started out. And I feel like Janera again, a little bit of disrespect oh in terms of the picks. Oh, boy. Here comes the Jarvan. And the Nogne, everybody, there we go, waiting for the Rift Rock coming in, locking up Jin Air. Tidal Wave comes through as well to add to that CC. Achani picking up a bloodthirsty kill there, but it's all about Arrow. It's all about Nogne and GBM on their run. This is going to be an easy whatever KT wants it to be at this point. More like turrets, Baron, inhibitors. What do you want? Yeah, probably just push this up and go for the Baron right now. You have that 20 seconds. They may just go for the tower. Get an inhibitor, too, maybe. Pilot and GBM still up, so this one's a little bit more risky. Yeah. Trace, though, with no equalizer, there's no real way to push them off of this. Wow, they're going to go on to Trace. He flashes, and he will barely escape. Meanwhile, though, the inhibitor does go down, and 
KD can still go after this Baron. This doesn't really change that, I would think. No, not at all. Yep. Four super minions already in the mid lane. Sets up an easy recall, but this game, this is how you shut down a team with very little wave player. Constant pressure on those turrets. KT has played it out beautifully, played across all the lanes. Well, to continue to get tower after tower after tower. And now, well. KT looking to easily close this one out. I mean, this Ari is absolutely terrifying at the moment. Yeah, picking up the uh, Elixir as well, too. Yeah, Elixir of Wrath. Yep. For this Corky, and like, we have a blue pot on the Nogne as well. So that's a great way, adding those temporary stats just to slam the door shut. Score with no Iron Elixir, so I'm kind of disappointed in him. You know, you want to be Giant Jarvan. It's unmanly to end the game without being yeah. Giant Jarvan, isn't it? You just should call him Jar Huge. <laughs> wow, someday a bit on the run right here. Has to wild growth himself Oh, uh -oh. nice equalizer. Flashes, can he make it away? This is Lulu we're looking at, but it's a 2v1, and I don't know if someday's going to be able to make it out of this one. They're going to give up the Baron, though. He'll gladly give his life for his team's Baron. Oh, over the wall, trying to catch Chaser. Nagne can't quite do it. Baron getting lower, Chaser looking for an opportunity, a nice zoning tidal wave to allow KT to get that Baron, and that was close. GBM, or rather Pilot, nearly stealing it with that True Shot Barrage. And trying to do what they could, see if they could actually get a miracle steal like they did in the first game of this series, but yeah. it's not going to happen. And Jin Air again forced right back into their base. Mid lane inhibitor has respawned. That's about the brightest thing that Jin Air has going for them, but they are just getting crushed in this third game of the series. There's the fifth dragon coming up in a minute 20. KT should be easily able to take it and then drive the victory home. Yeah. They are looking tubular this game. I'm going to call them Kawabunga Telecom from now on. <laughs> well, they are surfing with Nami, so I guess that's okay. That is true, yeah. It's very fitting. It's appropriate. Yet another blue buff for Nagne. Yep. Can't get enough of those this game. Has to, has to rift walk out immediately. GBM just can't get close to anybody. Oh. It is over. Baron coming in. There goes another inhibitor. Again. Pull back. 30 seconds still to drag. Yep, that's fifth. Uh, that would be fifth drag for yes, KT as well. Be. Oh, wow. Over the wall comes Nagne. A lot of damage onto Chaser. Can't quite finish him off, but it does push him away. There goes the turret. It's going to be inhibitor number three unless G, unless uh, Jin Air can pull off a miracle here. Oh, GBM going in. There's the Zonia's equalizer. Comes through as well. Tidal wave zoned out by Hachani. They're going to back everyone off. Score locks people up. There's a nice Aqua Prison to set up the double kill for Nagne. And this one, this one is really over, guys. Yeah, it is. Just pushing it, not even going yeah. for the fifth dragon, just Don't need taking it. the win immediately. Why not? And so, a brand new KT comes in, and they will take down the Jin Air Green Wings 2-1. There it is, GG. Really impressive series by KT. I am very surprised to see this team show up tonight. Nogne. Me too. What were they waiting for? Playing well. And for the first time in a very long time. Yeah, well, same with Arrow. I mean, just across the board, KT just looking much, much better than we've seen them all season long. And, you know, Jin Air, yeah, Chaser had a rough game one, and, and things could have been a little bit better, but, you know, it wasn't like massive throws or anything from Jin Air. KT just genuinely played that much better, I think. Well, it was a little bit of throwy by Chaser in the first game, and Jin Air actually nearly managed to win that game anyway, but game three was extremely decisive for KT. Victories across the board. Yeah. And I think that had Jin Air, if they were even, they would have been okay, but when you start to fall behind with the composition with no wave clear, KT showed exactly how to punish that. What yeah. a great job from KT. Since when has KT known how to close games, too? Yeah. This is it's, very good job closing. Yeah, just completely completely the opposite of the KT we've seen all season long up until now. Yeah, finally trying to press advantages or at least play aggressively against Incredible Miracle. They